listening to the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast, a podcast in sisterhood for female entrepreneurs that serves up savvy, actionable marketing advice and interviews with creative business owners who are in the trenches building their businesses as we speak. The Marketing and Yoga Pants community is for you, the girl on her couch, in her yoga pants, top knot tight, hunched over her MacBook, trying her hardest to get the word out about her business. So in the name of supporting each other while supporting ourselves, bringing community, sound marketing advice, coffee, chocolate, and wine together for you, yoga pants wearing business owner, in a world where followers mean nothing but paying customers mean the world, Join us on this week's podcast episode and in our private Facebook group where you'll meet your soul sisters and build your business in yoga pants. Welcome back to another episode of the Marketing in Yoga Pants podcast. I'm Britt Colo, and I'm here today with Julie and Casey, founders of Vital Voice Training. Thank you so much for joining me today, ladies. So happy to be here. All right. So I first found out about Vital Voice Training and these two beautiful ladies at a recent conference that I went to in Philly called Fearless Con. And they were the very first speakers that I was able to sit down and just absorb all of their brilliance from. And they totally captivated me. The The entire thing, the, the entire um, presentation that they gave was just so good and it set up the entire conference so well. Speaking about how we present ourselves uh, through our voice and how we present ourselves uh, specifically, what really stands out in my mind is how we present ourselves as we're sitting down. Cause you know, we have, we, we, we typically know of these things, what to do, present ourselves when we're standing, but sitting down is harder, especially I think for women. So anyway, so this is where I found out about them. I got to talk to Casey just briefly here and there, um, throughout the morning. And I am just so pumped to have them here, get some insight into their business, their industry and their marketing strategies and what makes it all tick. So you guys ready to jump in? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's do this. So first of all, tell us, how do you earn your living? What do you do? We do private coaching and workshops like the one that you saw at Fearless Con. And thank you so much for your kind words. We <laughs> loved Fearless Con. Fearless Con yeah. is amazing. Um, we, we really do love particularly the women's conferences and getting to come in and speak with women of all ages and all experiences and all backgrounds and stuff and, and talk to them about their voice and their presence in the world and sitting and standing and everything in between. Uh, so private coaching workshops, we're looking at possibly doing an e-course sometime soon so we can mm. get the message out a little bit more. Uh, lots of plans on the burner. Nice. Okay. And you guys... Tell us where you guys are calling in from, because you're calling in separately and from two completely opposite coasts. <laughs> so tell us how that works, because you guys are co-founders of a business, so and you're not in the same city, not even close. So tell us about that. Well, um, my move to San Francisco literally happened three days ago. Um, oh, okay. So very it's busy. new. <laughs> okay. Um, we're figuring it out, figuring out... Um, how to work with Zoom more effectively, how to do more um, online type Skype coaching sessions. Um, and then also we've always wanted to build a West Coast version of Vital Voice as well. So it's really exciting. It's also really new. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I have an answer for you <laughs> at the moment. Um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love those we're, we're definitely, in the middle looks. <laughs> yes. we're, we're definitely, you know, figuring out logistics right now, but it was the right time for a lot of reasons, even though it kind of happened quicker, I think, than either of us had initially planned. But um, we are very excited about building a presence for the company on the West Coast. We already actually have clients. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. We already actually have clients from San Francisco and California. I have something in my throat. Hold okay. on. <laughs> That's why we have an editor. It's all good. 
I'll, I'll, I'll fill Ooh, in. We've worked, we've worked quite a bit with um, a career coach from San Francisco uh, who has referred to us a lot of clients. Um, we definitely have a base. Um, I've been working with the UCSF medical school while I've been out here. Uh, it's, it's, and it's also a really good place to start with our bigger mission, which is changing communication within corporations and within the corporate world, which is something we're also deeply passionate about being in the heart of Silicon Valley right now, where the discussion is hot. So yes. um, in, in that way, uh, it's a really great place and a great time to start to build this um, with, uh, on the left coast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, so many things to dive in to there, but let's go back. Tell us the story of how you, you both individually came to do this with your life. Julie, you can go ahead and start. Uh, so my background is in acting, and I got my MFA uh, from Northern Illinois University, um, which is in DeKalb, Illinois, about 60 miles. The sign literally says DeKalb straight ahead when you're going out on the freeway. Um, <laughs> Really wonderful <laughs> training. Um, my training is in straight acting, um, which is the opposite of musical theater. So I, I unless it's like a really good karaoke, um, I'm not considering myself a singer. <laughs> um, and then from there, what I found really intriguing was learning about voice. I'd always grown up a relatively shy child and I'm definitely an introvert, but then mm -hmm. I discovered there was this whole other physical level to voice, which meant you weren't trapped in the voice that you thought was your voice, that there was so much more potential to that. Mm -hmm. So when I got to New York, I pursued that with different teaching trainings and ended up um, teaching at Manhattan Bell College, uh, intro to voice for undergrads. And then that blossomed into meeting Casey, um, which I love the way she tells the story of how we met. <laughs> Let her do that. Um, and then that blossomed into vital voice training, which I think we are both so incredibly proud of. Definitely. Awesome. Okay. So I came to singing, singing specifically very early in my life. My family is very musical. Um, I, I say that we sang together Von Trapp style. <laughs> uh, I grew up singing in church with my mom and my dad and my little brother. And uh, using my voice came like very naturally to me. I, my, you know, there's like six word bios that people do. Um, yeah. My six word bio that I, that I wrote for myself a few years ago was loud girl learns to amplify others. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> I was I was a loud girl. I mean, yeah. I I uh, I was an introvert. Uh, I probably consider myself more of an ambivert now. I think the older I get, the more introverted I get. But I definitely love people. I love chatting with people, meeting new people, all these things. And I always felt very comfortable using my voice. But my journey into voice work came as I discovered kind of what was and wasn't working about my communication style. Because I think people have this idea that like um, introverts are always good at talking or introverts are, or extroverts rather are always good at talking uh, mm -hmm. and that we're always comfortable communicating and everything. And the fact is we aren't always, or sometimes mm -hmm. we're comfortable, but our audience isn't comfortable because we're not listening as much as we need to. So mm -hmm. um, being a people pleasing perfectionist, uh, as a child, I definitely spent a lot of years trying too hard with my voice, especially as someone who was defined by having a good voice, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I started teaching singing uh, after I got my undergraduate degree in singing and dancing and acting, musical theater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in between professional acting gigs, I did a lot of singing coaching. And I kind of fell backwards into the speech coaching. I went for an interview that I thought was for a singing coach position for a company. And they looked at me and they said, yeah, actually we need a, a speech coach to work with business people on their presentation. And I was like, huh, I think I could do that. <laughs> and it turns out that my, my first client um, was a woman who was my age who had a podcast and she hated the sound of her voice. Mm. She had such wonderful ideas to share and such 
great content and was losing her voice because she was getting tired and hated how she sounded. And so we worked on breath and we worked on objectives and how to land the end of a sentence and all of these things. And I really, really fell in love with teaching this way and, and teaching these kind of people and these kind of issues. So around that same time, I decided that I did not uh, enjoy working for this particular company that I was working for, for a lot of reasons. And uh, Julie and I met doing what we like to call affirmation aerobics, <laughs> which is really, uh, it's actually a program called Shrink Session, which is really fantastic. And it's like kickboxing and dance fitness and like high intensity interval training, but you shout mantras at the same time. So like you're punching and you're saying, <laughs> I can feel my power. And it's really cool. So Erin Stutland, who is the woman who put this program together, in addition to the affirmation aerobics, also had a goal setting class. So Julie and I met in this goal setting class and immediately clocked each other in the room as like, oh, she's also an actress. Oh, she's also a voice teacher. Oh, she seems really cool. So we had tea together and we started talking and they were like, we're gonna form like a lady accountability group. So in the midst of this goal accountability group, we did the dance that I think probably a lot of women are familiar with of she's really similar to me. And like, we have really similar goals. Does she see me as competition? Cause like, I don't see her as competition, but like, I don't <laughs> want to like step on her toes. I mean, is this weird? And um, eventually I think we both looked at each other and went, are you, are we, we're, yeah, you're, yeah, I'm cool. Okay, great. <laughs> and suddenly everything was cool. Um, oh, that's so cool. And, uh, <laughs> so it's also so somehow, somehow it became the most natural thing in the world for two women who had never started a business together or never started a business ever mm -hmm. to start a business together, which was insane on both of our parts, but amazing. Over to you, that Julie. And our <laughs> approaches. Yeah, I was just going to say, so yeah, our, our approaches, um, Casey's talking about, does she see me as competition? We share a similar philosophy, but our tactics are different in how we work with clients, which is what makes it so beautiful for um, the experience that our clients have or when we do presentations, because um, I come from this, I, I really love digging in under the surface. I want to find that. You know, where are you from? You know, where is your family from? What was your key uh, underbelly of vocal identity? Uh, Casey also does this, but she works on a very technical level, just introducing people to the different sounds that they can make. We're having some trouble with the with the connection here. Own bodies. So the complement between us. Okay, um, am I back? Yeah, I think um, looks like your connection is a little sketchy. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can turn it, here. I think it might be fixing itself. Okay. You're going to have to say that all over again, Julie, because it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you get to see the other side of the room. I think... <laughs> Oh, shoot. Uh, it looked like the, it looked like the connection little bars turned a little bit better for you. So I think okay. you should be good. Okay. Well, we'll go from here. And if we need to fix it, yeah. we'll go. Um, okay. I, I was just saying that Casey and I, uh, while we share a similar philosophy in how we believe that speech work is not one prescriptive thing and it's a real disservice to diversity to humans everywhere to make them think that they should all sound the same mm -hmm. and my favorite thing to do is really dig in and get under the surface and find out core communication values where are you from what it was your family's communication habits like because it can really formulate what we think of ourselves as. And if I've learned anything from my acting training, it's that we are so much more such a broader spectrum mm -hmm. of what we even imagine ourselves to be. And Casey sharing the same core values can also teach people literally the different parts of their resonators and their bodies and how to physically do these things. 
Um, so I would guess I come from a more emotionally grounded place of teaching and Casey, I would say, comes from a compassionate but also um, technical place. I'm your that... technician and also <laughs> your, I'm your technician but also your cheerleader and also your like playtime coordinator because I think that <laughs> I think that one of, but one of the things about uh, voice training and one of the reasons, frankly, why I left the company that I started with is that voice work should be fun. Yes. It shouldn't be about, I'm going to teach you how to put on your serious voice so people will take you seriously and turn <laughs> everyone into these perfect performing robots. Um, learning how to use your voice and be in your body and be present in communication and own the full palette of human expression should be fun and exciting and it should be something that makes you feel great and mm -hmm. and definitely like what getting there can sometimes involve poking into some deep stuff because our voices as julie said are made up of everything that makes us human in the first place, right? It, it's made up of our, our backgrounds and our habits. We develop our voices as social creatures. So some of the things that you might be being criticized for at your workplace served you in another environment. So how on earth could we as coaches come in and be like, your voice is broken and we're gonna fix it because no, your voice is not broken. Your voice adapted to a set of circumstances and now it's in a do. different set of circumstance. Yeah. So mm. giving you choices, giving you agency to choose how you want to show up in the world while also reminding you that you have this enormous human palette of expression to play with. Mm. Um, that, that, <laughs> I really agree with you that our, our biggest strength as coaches is that they get this 360 approach, which is so exciting. I compare it a little bit to, if you ever walked into a room and it's, it's kind of dim and you're stumbling around and taking really careful steps and, you know, when this has been happening to me a lot lately because I've been staying in a lot of different places, <laughs> and, and, but suddenly somebody's like, oh, there's a light switch. And then you look around, oh, I can just walk to where I need to go. I think it's a, the same thing. You can <laughs> really turn on the power of their voices. All of a sudden you realize you've got, the, the whole room is lit. You can choose. Mm. I, oh, I can walk over there. I don't have to shuffle carefully trying to do it right so I don't fall or make a mistake or break something or any of mm. those things. So that's an analogy <laughs> I've thought a lot lately. <laughs> that's so fascinating. So can you guys tell me, what kind of clients are you working with? What's their, who are they and why do they come to you? It's a really interesting question because we do have such a huge range of clients we work okay. with. Um, mm -hmm. We've worked with a lot of people at this point who are putting together um, TEDx speeches or South by mm. Southwest speeches um, and or a big presentation at work. So they need some content help as well as delivery help. Uh, we've also worked with ESL speakers uh, because it's that thing of I hate my voice or I worry that my accent is holding me back. And I and Casey, I know, also feels deeply passionate that your accent is beautiful. Mm -hmm. We can work on making you understood. But beyond that, we're not. No, no, no. We're not getting rid of that. That's a part of you. That's where you're from. Yeah. Um, and so individually, that's really been a focus, helping um, a lot of young women learn how to speak up in an office environment, technical skills like how do you interrupt, how do you speak out in a meeting if that's not your comfort zone. Um, and I know, Casey, you've got some thoughts on this as well, so I'm <laughs> turning it over to you. I, I think the thing that unites all of our clients, whether they are the you know, highly technically brained person who is really introverted or just doesn't, isn't used to sort of, not human interaction, everybody does human interaction, but, but sort of the, there are definitely introverts in the sort of science and technical areas that are less comfortable with expressing their big ideas to other people, um, whether it's them, whether it's, you know, the person who's on the biggest stages of all, and we're just helping them do that. The thing that unites our clients is a really deep, sense of like personal development, a desire for mm. personal development and a desire to 
show up bigger world. Show up brighter and stronger and more of themselves. They're, they're the kind of people who are like, either they've been told by someone outside of themselves that they need to work on this, or they have an idea in themselves that they need to work on it but they're not coming from a place of despair. They're coming from a place of like, I know I can work on this and I'm ready to do it. I just need some help. And those are like the best people to have as clients because yeah. they're so ready to do it. And, yeah. and so I feel like that's a gift to us as the, as the teachers because we get to work with people who really, really want to hang out with us and like mm -hmm. dig into this stuff. We, little secret, uh, We've gotten to meet the coolest people through doing voice work yes. and people we wouldn't have met otherwise. Um, uh -huh. So that's, that's part of the thrill of what we do is not just the voice work, but oh my God, you're doing the most amazing things. Ah, oh, <laughs> let me help you amplify. And I get to be uh, on your team. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's it's, so cool. It's so great. So take us back. How did you get the attention of your first clients and how did you earn your first dollar? Uh -huh. What did that look like? <laughs> well, so they both laugh. <laughs> there was a day, there was a day uh, long ago in about April of 2014, I think, mm -hmm. where we were sitting in my living room in my apartment in New York City drinking rosé and figuring out what we were gonna name our company, Googling <laughs> possibilities, seeing what had already been taken and everything. And we, we finally settled on vital voice training. And we were really excited about the word vital and how it, it, you know, it, it symbolizes life and it symbolizes energy and it symbolizes you know, showing up and bigness in the world. And, and so we bought our domain name. And then we, uh, Julie had been reading this, this particular, um, blog called get bullish. And she's like, I think that she was just talking about a call for speakers for her conference. So we went on the website and we saw that there was indeed a call for speakers for bull con 2014. So we sent out a pitch email of a workshop that we made up in that moment. Mm -hmm. Not didn't have it written made up a title, made up a blurb. We're like, I think this sounds like something we'd like to talk about. We can write it later. Yeah. We, had six and we months. sent a pitch email. <laughs> we, sent a, we sent a pitch email that, you know, like an hour after buying our domain name and like naming our company to this woman named Jen Desira who runs Get Bullish. And less than 24 hours later, she had set up a drinks date in Brooklyn with us. And we were gonna like talk to her about this. And we went and had this great drink session with her. And um, Jen is, we both adore her. We think she's brilliant. Uh, Jen is also one of those people that can be a little scary the first time you meet her because she's very poised, very beautiful, very serious. Like she's mm. just not, she doesn't have a terribly expressive face. Mm -hmm. And so I remember sitting across from her and she would kind of nod and a, and a tiny little crease would appear between her brow. But other than that, there was no expression. Mm. And I remember walking out of that meeting thinking, oh my God, she hates us. <laughs> and then a day later she was like, yeah, totally come and speak at the conference. It's going to be great. <laughs> so it just goes to show you, you cannot always judge people by their facial expressions. That's so true. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we actually just got back from our fourth bullish conference where we were experts in residence. Uh, so oh, that, nice. that, that first, and, and we have met so many clients, so many friends, so many opportunities came from that first pitch email where we were just making it up as we went along. And it was, uh, it was a beautiful thing that ended up happening because of that. So that's sometimes how it starts. So that was 2014. Uh, <laughs> and then what did you do to that, to drum up some more attention and more clients? Uh, Casey, can I tell the story? Yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> I love all these stories. So much fun. So funny enough, sending out, um, getting uh, accepted to speak at Volcon, the email went out and a young woman in San Francisco actually saw it and said, oh, I'm looking for women to come in and do uh, a presentation exactly like this for my giant financial institution for their women's group. 
Mm -hmm. So we, we thought we had until November to put together this presentation, uh, what does authority sound like, which is now one of our core presentations that we, we love to do, um, July. So we had three months. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, so we had one month, one month. We did okay. one month because Jen sent out this email with, with the list of speakers uh, in June to announce oh, kind of okay. going to be talking. And she was like, can you come out and do it in San Francisco in a month? And we're like, uh, sure. Yes, we can <laughs> definitely do that. That we have not written yet in four weeks instead of four months. So we <laughs> hauled it together, did it, came out to San Francisco. Um, I have my, a lot of family out here and lived here for a long time. So we, we were able to settle, go in for a hundred women who are very high, uh, highly driven individuals. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Our really not, I wouldn't call it a rough draft because we had done a little bit of um, practice rounds before that, but the first time the presentation was done. It was the first was not, iteration. It yeah. was the first iteration was not for the warm and fuzzy Vulcan audience. It was for the Death Star. <laughs> 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 so that was, that's, that was our, really our first big paying gig. Um, and it was our trial by fire for was, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it burned. It burned. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those things. I think, um, and 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 I think that this is a good lesson for every business owner to have is that like, you think you know what your product is. You're really excited about it, and then you put it out in front of an audience, and you put it in front of different kinds of audiences. And this, you know, particular giant financial in institution. Julie and I don't have corporate backgrounds. Like we had ideas about what we what we believed and we had things that we cared very passionately about. And and to be clear, like some of that audience really, really got it. Mm -hmm. But I think that the real the the moment that we really realized how much translation we had left to do uh was when we asked 150 women in pantsuits to stand up and put their arms out to the sides. We were talking about space. You did this exercise actually in, yeah. uh, at, at yeah. Fearless Con. Yeah. Um, the first time that we asked them to do that, we did not give it the sort of soft intro that we now give it. We did not give it the sort of trigger warning of like, there is no, you know, we're gonna do some weird stuff here. We were just like, well, obviously people know how to stand up and put their arms out to the side. You would have thought that we asked that audience full of wonderful, brilliant finance women to kill puppies. They oh were gosh. so stressed out by the act of standing up and putting their arms out to their sides, like the looks of horror on so many faces. It was, it was a moment where we realized that we had translation left to do because we spoke actor yeah. and they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, you know, it was a language barrier thing and, and, and but it was so, We got, there, there we go. It did work. The good thing that we learned is that it did work. It just still needed some serious tweaking for certain yeah. kinds of audiences. <laughs> That's and so cool. Definitely felt like Daenerys Targaryen after that, uh, when we walked out of that room, we're like, okay, <laughs> translation to do, but I am ready to be the mother of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Okay. And so now, uh, end of 2017, going into 2018, how are you finding your clients right now? What's working? Referrals. Mm -hmm. People who work with us, uh, we've got a really, really high rate of, um, once we have a 15 minute call with somebody, they get what we're doing, they get where we're going to take them and they stay with us. We've mm -hmm. had a client at this point who's worked with us for the past three years, just keeps booking more sessions, um, which is lovely. But uh, between people re-upping sessions that they've already done or experiencing what it's like to have that successful talk that was fun and you mm -hmm. didn't fill out, you know, feel like you walked out and I hit every mark and I did it just right. Why do I feel so empty inside? Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so at this point, I mean, we're looking at expanding in different directions. Like Casey mentioned, an e-course, um, looking how we can make our services available. I mean, I know I'm really passionate about uh, lower income women getting this work to them mm. to be helpful in that arena. Um, so there's a lot of different angles that we're looking at. We're in our toddler years and there's definite shifts happening, especially East Coast, West Coast. Mm -hmm. um, but I know we're both really optimistic and excited. Um, and I know Casey's got some brilliant ideas up her sleeve as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think the biggest thing that's been great for us is just really getting out and meeting people. I mean, I have been to so many networking events. <laughs> and met and you know and, and handed out cards and you have the conversations and stuff but um it, it's really fun to have a business that when you tell someone about it they get really excited about it which happens a lot people yeah. think that what we do is cool and frankly what we do is cool it is cool it stuff. Is. and so it's it's easy to talk about it it's easy to be enthusiastic about it and so i think that that translates to people so you know i've i've had um lots of conversations and business card exchanges that have that have translated into, oh, let's do a workshop for your organization or, oh, let's do this. Um, in addition, kind of just the, the, the network of women that you start to create as a business owner uh, and, and that the referrals within that network, we've created partnerships with executive coaches. We've created partnerships with, uh, with people who do kind of similar work to us, but don't have our particular expertise. Mm -hmm. Um, we are definitely looking at venturing into more, um, more outbound marketing. I mean, a lot of inbound marketing and stuff where we want to up our, our contributions in that too. Cause whenever we publish a guest blog post somewhere, we usually get somebody coming in and talking to us about stuff. So, um, it's good. It's, it's time to get more intentional about that. I think we've been, it's been easy cause people do the referrals thing has been really simple, but as we want to really scale up and grow, it's time to, it's time to buckle down and do some more marketing in yoga pants. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I promise. It's fun. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Um, so, okay. What you do is is so intriguing when you coach it. So could you, this is totally on the spot, could, but could you take us through like an exercise, any cut, like a beginner's exercise? Let's do, Julie, let's do objectives. Um, yeah. Objectives are great. So, all right. <laughs> so wait, uh, just to start, let's give everybody in the audience, whoever is listening, we're going to give you a script. It's a very simple script. And that script is, hi, my name is whatever your name is. So okay. my script would be, hi, my name is Casey. Yours would be, hi, my name is Brittany, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we talk about a lot, it, people ask us all the time, how do actors not get nervous, right? Well, the fact is actors do get nervous. A, we know how nerves feel in our bodies. We know that nerves don't have to hijack you and make you want to puke and die. You could, they can mm -hmm. just be part of the energy. Um, mm -hmm. Nerves are an entirely human response to a stressful thing. It's your body giving you extra energy to accomplish a difficult task. Mm. Um, but the other way that actors don't get nervous question, you know, quote unquote, is by focusing our energy on our scene partner and what we want from them. So it's not about how am I doing? It's about, am I accomplishing what I want? And am I really connecting to my scene partner? So we use objective in the, in, the term, in the sense that actors use it, which is what do I want? What am I trying to accomplish here? So hi, my name is, is a great, easy script to start with for objectives. So we're going to make you do this right now, Brittany. Okay, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So your job is through the camera and with your voice over okay. this podcast is your objective is to intimidate. Ooh. Just with that script. Hi, my name is Brittany. Okay. So try Ready? it. Okay. Why yep. did I ask for this? A, this is what I'm thinking. Like, <laughs> I should have known you were going to do, make me do something. No, this is cool. Okay. I think we did this at Fearless Con. So I'm, I got you. And my partner that did that to me, she was like, amazing at this and I she really intimidated me I was like ooh. <laughs> okay here we go all right hi my name is Brittany okay are Those you an, are, are you an older sister or a younger sister older or do you, oh you're older okay yeah so, um, do you 
brother or sister. I don't know why I just assumed a brother. Okay. Yeah. So have you ever had to get, have you ever had to like lay it down for your brother? Uh, Yeah. I mean, probably when we were younger. Yeah. So let's go to that. Let's go to that place. Try it one more time with that, with that. You can picture your brother, like time, a time that you've had to be like, "Mm." (laughs) okay. Um, I'm not very good at this. Yes, um, you are. You are. You are. I promise you. You are. Playtime. You're There's just okay. Right okay. Answer. Right okay. now, you're thinking. You're thinking. Stop thinking. Okay. Think okay. Stronger. Um, and I have to say, yeah, I have to say, hi, I'm Brit. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Brittany. Yes. Okay. Said it. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so there are lots of different ways to intimidate someone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now uh, here is another objective that might be a little bit more comfortable. Okay. Uh, To welcome. Okay. Hi, my name is Brittany. Lovely. That was way easier. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Oh. Like welcoming come much more easily to us than intimidate. Um, We're working with someone right now who actually has a very special skill to eviscerate. And I love watching her because her face goes and then you see the blazer start to come out of her eyes and she will (laughs) unpack any argument in the most intense way Uh and it is amazing and she loves actually that feeling of evisceration because she's not afraid of it and all of these things that we label as negative or I shouldn't or uh, women don't are the things that are holding us back from maybe just a little bit of intimidation um, can be a, combined with welcome to gain mm. some power. So this is why objectives are so much fun. You can start to you know mix and match. Um, you can find something that excites you. You can find something that you really want to play with. So it's just a I toolkit. It's, so it's just painting with different colors. So when you practice these objectives, is it, is the idea, you know, the more you practice each of them, you can find, you can kind of find the things that make you like, I don't even know how to do that and comfortably do that. And then you find the things that are more comfortable and just, you kind of get just to get to play and play, not just with how your, yeah. how your voice sounds, but also how you're presenting your whole self when you do it. Is that kind of the idea? It's, it's definitely the idea. Um, Every objective, they're just, they're verbs. So they're actions and they look different on different people. Right. So for some people, um, Casey actually posted this amazing clip from designing women the other night with (laughs) Julia Sugarbaker. Julia Sugarbaker's intimidation is to go in, go on, go out, go home, step up, polish up and walk out of the room. You know, there's all kinds of ways and all, I mean, there's infinite varieties of how one can play with an objective. Um, I personally love um, Dorothy Bornack from Golden Girls. And actually, I think all four of the Golden Girls have their own unique way if they want to intimidate. But Dorothy's is usually a deep silence. Mm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, so oh, yeah. The people listening to, to this podcast could have seen Julie's face doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, this, this is the this is the problem with the the lack of facial expressions available on a um, podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the objective thing is is really fun, and I think I think what it comes down to again is is expanding your palette of play, but also realizing that human beings have an internal BS meter right? We can mm-hmm. tell when the words and the intention don't match, yeah. whether that is being used as a tool, i.e. the classic example of like the Southern woman who says, oh, bless her heart. But under bless her heart is like dripping with disdain, right? Yeah. That's when the words and the objective don't match, but it's for a specific purpose. Mm-hmm. But then there's when you want to say something, but the objective is like, you want to say something really serious and really powerful, but your, your inner subconscious objective is I just want them to like me, or mm. I just want to get out of here. I just want this to be over with. That's when people sense that, that something's off yeah. and that's when you're not as effective. So, so stepping into those sometimes scary or different or intimidating objectives can be 
it, it can be a little creepy at first. It can be a little mm-hmm. weird. It can be a little itchy, mm-hmm. but it also, you, you learn again, that I keep coming back to this, how much range you have inside of you and how you can use it in a purposeful way to communicate powerfully. Um, and it's, and it's fun. It's super fun to play with, especially when you just, you know, get like a low stress script. We love having people read out loud. Um, we have a couple of articles that we love to have people read with different objectives. Like there's one from uh, bust that's called how to mansplain in six easy steps. Oh my and it's gosh. written like a motivational speech. And it's, it's so brilliant. We have almost everybody read it um, because it's so funny because you can deliver it like a Tony Robbins style Ted talk. Or you can deliver it like like you're talking to a boardroom full of dude bros in three piece suits. Or you can deliver it like you're talking to a room of kindergartners and saying, you know, this is so easy, guys. We can all do this together. Like <laughs> all of those energies kind of translate into this text. It's really fun. That's so cool. I love this. This is so fascinating to me. I I love it. And I remember in your talk at Fearless Con, I kept thinking um, back when I was in corporate and I was not as comfortable with my person, like I I just, I was a chameleon. I felt like I had to be, I was like fitting myself into all these different situations that did not feel like me ever. Like I, I can't think of a single time when it was like, when it was okay, you know, and here we are. <laughs> I'm not in corporate anymore because it just <laughs> felt so wrong. But that, that talk really, um, brought me back to that place. And then, well, and I also thought, man, I wish I knew about these women when I was there, but, um, but then I, and I was just thinking like, now it's a whole new world of, of work and business and life. And I feel so much more comfortable. I wonder what could happen if I really continue to dive into the confidence, my confident nature in all the ways I can present myself and what could happen with that. You know, it's, it, that's where my head went and I just loved it. It was so, it was so inspiring to me. This goes back to what we're talking about when we talk about like our big goal is changing communication culture. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's a giant audacious goal to even speak out loud because Again, we're, we are not of the corporate world. We are sort of outside of it, but we hear these stories over and over again, and we see the disproportionate criticism of women, of people of color, of anyone mm-hmm. who doesn't fit um, what we sometimes call the mythic norm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and again, traditional vocal coaching was all about, here's how to fit the mythical norm better. And right. we really are creating what we think is a new, more modern, more inclusive model um, that honors that like you can make individual choices. It's kind of like, so people had, had, have discussed the book lean in a lot. Mm, right. Yeah. And I think Sheryl Sandberg is great. And I think that her ideas are great. I think that she is really, um, she really does want to make the world a better place. But the criticism that I heard a lot from my friends was, well, she's putting all of the onus on women to change. To, like, like it's, we have to do the thing and kind of not necessarily acknowledging that, well, yeah, but it's a, you know, you can lean in until you're falling over, but if the culture doesn't support that, nothing's going to change. And mm-hmm. so for us, we empower the individual client to make the choices that they want to make, but we also want to talk about corporate culture being more inclusive, being mm-hmm. more truly diverse. Um, there's a uh, Vernia Myers who we saw speak at a conference has an amazing, I think she just actually did her first Ted talk on mm-hmm. diversity and inclusion and the difference between token diversity, like let's have our representative from each of the major, you know, subgroups or whatever outside of the mythical norm versus real inclusion. And it's, it's exciting to feel like a part of, the world moving towards a more inclusive communication environment where people like you don't feel like you have to hide who you are every day when you go into your corporate office because that corporation lost out on your talents probably a lot because you didn't feel like you fit in. Yeah. So like those corporations want to have the most talented, the smartest, the most awesome people with different viewpoints. It's good for the bottom line. We're seeing that in research now. 
but you can't retain that kind of talent if you're making them feel like they don't fit in all yeah. the time. The mm-hmm. other thing I really think um, leaning in is a starting place, but leaning in can make you seem like you don't already have the power. Sometimes I tell clients, I specifically want you to lean back. Yes. Because that's a power move too. And, and, oh, and yeah. if you're trying to follow all the advice for everything, I need to lean in. Now it can look like I, I need something from you. Like the good girl posture that the you taught us posture. about. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. Yep, yep, yep. yep. But leaning back, at my, my dad tells a story about a boss of his that would sit at the end of the table, eyes closed, arms crossed, listen to the whole thing. And some young man at some point said something like, is he even awake? The guy opens his eyes and says, get out. Because he was the president of the company. So ah. power comes in all different ways. That was his way of creating power in a room. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to look like I'm not engaged, but I am taking everything in mm-hmm. right now. And I know exactly what to do mm. versus, you know, young person who has read MBA book or gone to business school X who taught them, I need to sit down. I need to find the place closest to the boss. I need to, you know, put my arms on the table. The weird direction that people get for how to have more presence are baffling to me. Arms on the table, arms not on the table. No, doesn't matter. And it goes back to the human bullshit meter that Casey was talking about. We, we, we talk about, and this is the last point I'll make because I'm rambling a little bit. (laughs) You're Um, good. (laughs) When it comes to how we connect to others. So we've got books telling us if I mimic their posture, they will feel a connection, a camaraderie. That doesn't happen. It happens a little bit more subliminally than that. We mimic postures when we feel a connection. So the human bullshit meter can pick up on this person's trying to mimic my posture versus if you really let yourself connect and have um, a true conversation with someone that starts to happen organically. And that is where power happens. And that is where communication happens. It's going for the result or checking the boxes instead of actually being present. And I think you know, to go back to that idea of like the clients that come to us are, are so into personal development and they're so eager to like show up bigger in the world, we end up with a lot of perfectionists. And again, mm-hmm. I, I called myself a perfectionist earlier. I'm very much on this right now. One of the things that we often have to do with our perfectionists is get them on board with this idea that there is no such thing as doing it right yeah in communication because you know and especially i especially i think for women because we're socialized to be good girls we're socialized to get straight a's and we're socialized to to you know check all the boxes and make sure you're doing everything right and if you and if you do everything right then good things will happen you know and and to acknowledge that that's not how the world works and that's not how communication works, that you can check every box every time and still not get the promotion and still not have the boss listen to you or be the one that's chosen for the project. And, um, and that you can kind of let go of that rat race a little bit. You can let go of that. And then you can start to make decisions that are right for you and experiment and and iterate and get better from a place of like i'm not afraid to to not be perfect this time Mm. i really like that yep that's what we all need to hear uh so Mm -hmm. if if someone if one of our listeners wanted to dive more into this do you have any uh go-to resources that you would reference them take them to a a book a podcast Uh, i know you guys you're saying course next year, maybe an e-course or something. Um, I know that's not out yet, but uh, anything to dive deeper into this subject? I think the book that we end up recommending the most to our clients um, is a book by a woman named Patsy Rodenberg, which we talked a little bit about in at FearlessCon, about three circles. Um, it's called The Second Circle, and it's about the three circles of communication, oh, yeah. um, yep. introversion, full extroversion, and where the sweet spot is in the middle. Mm-hmm. Uh, she also, if you are, you know, TLDR, um, 
<laughs> has a 15 minute video on YouTube. You can just look up Patsy Rodenberg second circle and mm -hmm. just take a look at, you can really see in how she works with actors specifically the difference in how these people are coming alive when they're talking. So I think that would be our number one resource. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some worksheets that you can, uh, that will be on sale very soon on our brand new website, which hopefully we'll be debuting just a little bit later this month. Um, so we're doing like a worksheet on, a worksheet on rhetoric. So like how to land the end of a sentence, using commas, using pauses, all that stuff. Um, we have a worksheet that if you sign up for our mailing list, you can get our worksheet on building an awesome elevator pitch, which we think is really fun. Oh, so cute. Uh, yeah, so we're getting, um, we're, we're getting more and more like littler resources as you know, if you can't, if you either don't have the time for private coaching or if you can't afford private coaching, like we want to still be able to be in communication with you. And um, yeah, I want to do some more video content, some more like little lessons. We, our blog, we talk a lot about uh, vocal fry. We talk about in managing interruptions. We talk about, um, Julie wrote an amazing post that's going to be very timely here in a minute um, on how to survive the holidays as an introvert. <laughs> Uh, Ooh, so good. <laughs> I wrote one about how to use your extrovert powers for good and not evil in a networking <laughs> event. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of good content on our website that will hopefully help people too. Yeah, Perfect. and we, we believe very much in having a sense of humor with all these things. So if you hear yeah. the word rhetoric and that sounds scary, just know all the examples are Harry Potter. Uh, <laughs> And with Perfect. an interruption video that I'm working on, all the examples are going to be from Willy Wonka. So we, we, we like to make it fun as you're working with topics that can seem really intimidating because again, it goes back to you already own it. We're just finding it in you. Um, plus yeah. I like, I like to play and um, also really love Harry Potter. So. Yeah. <laughs> so why not? Yeah. Why um, not? <laughs> okay. So, um, so, uh, kind of a random question, honestly. I'm just really interested. I love this question. Thank you, Oprah, for asking it all the time. And I finally had like the the moment I'm like, I got to ask that question more often. I want to know what inspires you in your work. Um, I think for me, something happens when I'm coaching or when I'm thinking about these things that I disappear completely. And I am mm. so focused on the other person. And there's this magic and alchemy that happens. Um, my curiosity satisfied, I get to creatively play or, okay, that's not working. Let's try this. And it engages my whole brain. And that for me can keep me on a high for days. I love, mm. I love, I love it. So I would say that that's for me, very inspiring. That's a more personal answer uh, than like the bigger mission that we have, which is also inspiring for me. But in that day to day, just getting in a room and getting to make these synapses connect to show someone that their power is already there and see them light up and see them start to take space and the charisma just explode out of them mm -hmm. is my absolute favorite thing in the world. That's awesome. Mine is actually very similar. I, I, there is a, the moment that a client really steps into their own power and their own magnetism and own something. We were actually working with someone the other day who, who just did it, her, her first TEDx talk and we're super, super proud of her. And um, there was a point at her speech and, and I kept saying, and like, this is the point where you always drop in, you really drop in here. And she's like, I'm sorry, what does drop in mean? I'm like, oh, there's another one of those actor terms that I think people know and that they don't know. Okay, <laughs> so dropping in is like when something just goes gut level and your whole body just like settles and grounds and then you're just powerful, but it's effortless. Mm -hmm. It's connected. Your voice, your body, your message, all of it is connected and it's just coming out of you, but there's no push to it. There's no need to it. It's just there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's one of those things that seeing it is such a gift and the gift of being a witness to that and being part of the catalyst that makes that happen is just, it's, it's really powerful. And it, it, I was saying something to someone at Volcon the other day, I was just like, 
it feels like cheating to like my job as much as I like my job. <laughs> um, yeah. It feels like it, it, it's, it's like, um, you know, capitalism is supposed to make us miserable, right? <laughs> um, but but I, I get paid to do something that uses all my skill set and that uses my brain and my heart and my soul. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I care so deeply for my, our clients and, um, and just being part of a team that gets messages like we get to support out into the world is like, yeah. it's just amazing. Wow, that's so good. Okay, one last question we have to end with. I want you to guys, I, mm, let me start that over. I want you to look back on when you guys first met each other and thought, hey, I think we have a business here. Uh, what advice would you give to yourself when you're first starting out? That girl on her couch, hunched over a MacBook, trying to figure this all out, which we all are all the time. But back then, what would you say to her? You don't have to know everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, Google University is, <laughs> is a remarkable resource, mm -hmm. uh, but also don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to tap your network and ask the questions. And, uh, and if you end up putting a value on your time and it's going to take you way more time to accomplish something than it would take someone else who already knows how to do the thing. Don't be afraid to pay someone to do the thing. Yeah. Amen, sister. For sure. <laughs> I would everything Casey has said, uh, and then I would also like to add, um, price yourself, including your time that you're spending prepping. Mm -hmm. yes. I think that that's, that's something that, um, especially artists, um, don't necessarily do because you only get paid when you show up, you're expected to do all of your homework on your own, on your own time. You don't get paid for that. Um, most corporations don't do that. Lawyers don't do that. Lawyers bill for all the research that they do. Right. Yeah. So, so price yourself accordingly and, and really respect yourself and your time. Yes. Amen. Okay. Uh, before we go, could you please tell us where to find you online? Where do we go? Vitalvoicetraining.com. All one word. Perfect. And uh, we, we have broken the cardinal rule of uh, social media. We have different social media handles. Sorry. Twitter <laughs> is at vital underscore voice. Okay. Instagram is at vital voice training. And uh, drop us a line, sign, us up for a sign up for our mailing list, and we'll send you our elevator pitch packet. And uh, you'll be the first to hear about our e-course. And if you are interested in private coaching, we would love to do a free 15-minute chat with you. Just let us know. Oh, perfect. Okay. You heard them girls go check them out, send them some love, and then hop into our private Facebook group to hear even more from Julie and Casey over the next few days. for joining us on this episode of the marketing and yoga pants podcast keep the conversation going by visiting marketing and yoga pants.com slash facebook where you'll get to join that private facebook group i've been talking so much about there you'll get to chat with our podcast guests yeah they're in there too and all of the other brilliant creative business owners we're connecting we're meeting our soul sisters and we're building our businesses all while in yoga pants so come hang out with us. Again, visit marketinginyogapants.com slash Facebook to get in. And one more thing. If you dig this podcast, would you be awesome and share it with someone? This entire Marketing in Yoga Pants movement is nothing without its community. So please share. And if you're really feeling the love right now, jump into iTunes. You're probably already there if you're listening to this right now. And leave us a rating and review. The more of those we rack up, the more the podcast will be found by ladies like you and the stronger this community becomes. This episode was edited and produced by the Podcast Engineers. They're pretty great, so go find them at podcastengineers.com. This episode was also brought to you by my online marketing agency, Jam Marketing Group, and you can find us at jammarketinggroup.co. 
That's all for now. Thanks for listening. And I'll catch you back here next week on the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast. Love you. Bye.